So we're still in chapter 26 of Matthew and um, Jesus actually is in the middle of the Passover. And in a little bit, I'll give you the order of what a Passover feast is. It's the first and most important um, festival feast of the seven that the Hebrew children, the Jewish people partake of. And they still celebrate it and many Christians celebrate it. And so this is what happened. As they were eating, Jesus, somewhere in this time, and we'll kind of explain where it was when I give you the outline, he's with his disciples here. And he says, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. And so what he did is he took bread. And uh, if I can get this back here, I'm going to pull this up here. Um, bread uh, is kind of like a cake or a loaf of bread. Uh, the thing is, it was unleavened, which means it was flat and it was not risen by yeast. And so it was larger than this, I'm sure. But it was kind of like this, if you can see this. He took, he took the bread and he broke it. See, I just broke it right there into pieces. And uh, he, he took the bread and he broke it. He broke it, I mean. And, and he said, take eat. This is my body. <laughs> now, this is not the to typical thing that you would say. It's never been said in, for all those years since Moses instituted this. And this is like 1,500 years of, of celebrating the Passover. Of course, there were seasons when they didn't do it for a while, and then they reinstituted it. My point is, is that they never said anything like that in the ritual, in the ceremony of the Passover. And it was, I'm sure it was startling and stunning. They gasped and said, what did you say? <laughs> this is my body. They've always had this unleavened bread, you know, it was instituted since Exodus chapter 12. And yet he said this part that you've been having year after year in the springtime of March, April time, this part that you're eating, this is actually representing my body. I don't believe he's actually literally saying, this is my body. It's a symbol, it's a picture, it's a figure. And uh, wow, just like Jesus said at one time in John 10, he said, I am the door. Or in John 15, he said, I am the vine. And oh, it's not literal vine, he's not literally a door, and he's not literally the bread. As a matter of fact, here he is standing here and he says, this is my body. He's not saying this right here is my body, it isn't him. And so I don't believe in a, uh, a change of the material when, when uh, the, he, we eat this, we take what's called communion or the Lord's Supper or the Eucharist, I'll go over that in a little bit. Um, we, we don't, he, our, it isn't literally his body, it doesn't do a trans, trans substantiation thing where it changes, I, I don't believe that's what he's saying, it's a figure, he's really giving up a picture of, of this. He said, take, eat. Take ye, eat ye. Take you, eat this. This is what he's saying. And, uh, and he said, this is my body. And so he broke it and he shared it with all of them. He probably did it each one. He gave it to each person, each of the 11. Well, Judas, I think, may have left by this time. We'll get into that when we get into John and the book of John, John 13. But uh, it, it, I think there were 11 apostles right now and he gave it to each one of them. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them. So he had this cup. Let's see, where's my cup here? I think it's back here somewhere. Yeah, here it is. And I don't know exactly what it looked like, but you know, it could have been something like this. Um, and he took the cup and there was wine in it. And, and by the way, for a, a, however much wine there was, it was twice as much or th even sometimes triple the amount of water. So it was diluted. My personal opinion, it is probably wasn't what's called fermented, where they could get drunk on it as non-alcoholic, because it's interesting that it's called in these passages a fruit of the vine. Okay, so it's not necessarily been like sitting there fermented, but even if it was, um, they watered it down a bit and nobody got drunk on it. Although, in the New Testament, Paul mentioned when we get to the book of Corinthians that some were actually drinking so much that they got drunk. So some of it was for a minute, but maybe not at the uh, at that time. The fruit of the vine was literally the grapes here, you know, uh, like this. 
uh, they take the grapes of the vine and they smash them and then they get a, uh, a juice out of them. And that's the, the wine. Anyway, it says, drink ye all of it. First it says he, gave th he, he took the cup and gave thanks. Each time the bread was eaten, he, he, they gave thanks. Um, which is that time where they said, blessed be Jehovah God. The, uh, the Lord our King, this is actually in uh, what they literally said, something to that effect, and bless it, who gives us a f uh, the, how does it say, the fruit of the earth or the fruit of the vine or something. So he actually did what the Passover, you know, normally did. What's cool is that Jesus is actually taking the Old Testament and starting and taking the New Testament, combining them, mixing them, and he's kind of changing it for the Christian so it becomes far more meaningful. Um, you know, he is the Lamb of God. They actually had a lamb that they had sacrificed and they had prepared. I mentioned that in the last video, I believe. And, uh, and so they roasted it and they were going to eat it as part of this meal. He says, drink ye all of it. For this is, this is what they, he said. And it's like, they've never heard this before. It was new to their ears. For this is my blood. Well, the wine isn't, you know, that drink right there is not literally drinking blood. You know, the Bible forbids us to drink blood, but it's a picture again. It's a figure. It says, this is my blood of the New Testament. That word testament is heavy and, and thick. Uh, it means covenant. And, the t and this is a particular testament, a will of, of what Jesus is going to do here in his death here. And he, he said, this is the blood of the New Testament. And the blood is all the way through the Bible. You know, the sacrifice of the animals, the blood that forgives sins, that washes sins. The life of the flesh is in the blood, so it says in Leviticus. And Jesus gave his life. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Really, is shed for all, but every, how many? Many. Everybody. Uh, which is shed for many for the remission, the pardon, the taking away of sins. Remember, uh... John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. It's his lamb that was his shedding of the blood. Then he says, But I say unto you, I will not drink from now on, from henceforth, from here to later, of this fruit of the vine. See, it's called the fruit of the vine. He didn't say wine there, which could suggest that it wasn't like old. And as it gets old, it gets alcoholic um, and all until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And so that could be symbolic for wine typically was a special occasions where there's joy and there's celebration. And all. He's saying t maybe typically or like uh, symbolically, it's like, you know, he's not going to actually drink wine again with all of us. So it's basically, it's, it's a time of the, uh, when the kingdom is consummated, God's, G Jesus Christ comes back and we're united with him and heaven begins, you know, we're all, we're, we're all brought together. Or there could be a literal banquet, a feast, a festival, or he's going to actually drink wine. Not sure which, but it's very cool. Um, he says, I will not drink uh, henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you. So there could be a time really in, when Christ comes back where we um, drink that uh, with you in my Father's kingdom. And then, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And so let me explain some, a few more things. So don't leave yet. First, let's talk about the Passover itself. This is kind of a list uh, that the Passover, what they did, the, uh, kind of a part of it anyway. Um, there were four cups of wine, uh, or maybe they had, it doesn't say they filled the cup, maybe they didn't drink all the wine, but they took a cup and they had some, and I think really there was only one cup, and then they would pass it around. Maybe they had a cloth and they would wipe the sides of the, after the next person drank, and they pass it around. It seems that Jesus only had one cup and he passed it around, and so that's possibly typical uh, remember in the last video, there was at least 10 that's supposed to be in a, in a, a Passover, um, no less. So here there were originally 12. Maybe there are a few others that are not mentioned, but I don't think so. I think it was exclusive and it was just them, solitary group. 
And so he drank and pass it, pass it, and he said, drink all of it. But in the beginning, uh, there, in the Passover, real Passover, four cups are used. So they drink, maybe they, uh, they drank a little bit, um, each one of them. And then the next thing, and that's when they gave thanks um, and, and thank God and all, and the beginning of the ceremony. Then bitter herbs and unleavened bread are, are, are brought out. And this thing called uh, karaseth, which is um, vinegar. It's a combination of salt water sometimes or water. Vinegar, figs, almonds, dates, raisins, and spices. Uh, a, a spice that was added. So it was kind of mixed in, into sort of a gravy form of thing. And that's the thing that Jesus, remember he said about the betrayer, the traitor Judas, how he'll dip it in. It was kind of, they mixed it up. Sometimes it was maybe just salt water or something and vinegar, kind of a really bitter thing here, um, really strong. And that's kind of a symbol of the bitter slavery that the Egyptians had caused to the slaves of God's people, the Jewish people. And that's what Passover is, Passover is all about, you know, what the ending of that slavery into freedom. Okay, so anyway... Or it was, it, made a, it could have been all this mix. There's different uh, interpretations of them, different ways they used it. So they had this mixture of stuff. So that's when they uh, began eating the bitter herbs and also the unleavened bread and all. And then the lamb was brought in, but it wasn't served yet. The lamb was brought in. I don't know if you can see that. And then we have the uh, second cup of wine. And at this second cup of wine, they began singing or chanting um, Hallel, which is Psalms 113 to 118. If you want to go a little deeper, you could open those passages. And uh, references are there. This is a psalm and a worship time of uh, the Messiah in there, like in Psalm 118 and such. Really beautiful stuff, and it's hints uh, about Jesus himself there. But anyway, Psalm 113 to 118. Well, on the second cup of wine, it was only one Psalm 113 and 114 uh, that they sang. They just began singing that right there, so in their ceremony. Then the bread and herbs eaten, uh, then the lamb. So um, I, I, th I think it's at this time they were they were eating, and maybe a little, maybe this other thing was when they brought it in, you know, uh, the um, bitter herbs and unleavened bread, and so then they started eating the lamb, you know, the the meat there, and then the third cup of wine was brought out, and that, in my opinion, is when Jesus said, "Take." Well, first he said, "Take eat that the bread." He said that while they were eating the bread. It says, while they were eating, Jesus said, take eat, this is my body, which is given to you. And then on the third cup of wine, that's when he said, take drink, you, all of it, all of you drink this, drink it all up, uh, because that's, this is my blood of the new covenant. Wow, powerful. And so that's the third cup of wine. And shortly after, they had a fourth cup of wine. And that's when they sang the rest of them, Psalms 115 to 118 of the Halal. They sung all of it. And if you remember, I just read that in that passage when it says, and they sung a hymn. That's what they most likely sung, because uh, that's been a tradition for uh, centuries that they would uh, do that. And so uh, to end here, I think I want to end on this. Um, this is what's so important uh, about this, is that God is breaking the covenant. And by the way, the word covenant means to cut. And God's cutting the covenant for us, and it's a, it's a bleeding. Blood is involved in the covenants of agreements where a, a one person comes into another uh, agreement with another person or a nation with another nation. And this is kind of like marriage, for example, is, is, a, is a sort of a, it's definitely a covenant type relationship with the uh, wife where you come into agreement together and you do promises and vows and, and all that. Well, <clears throat> the word covenant also means testament and that's why we have what's called the Old Testament and then the New Testament. And Jesus is performing the New Testament. He's beginning it right here. He changed the Passover meal to say, this is my body and this is my blood instead of just wine that they always you know, took. 
um, you know, there. So anyway, uh, the Passover, there's uh, the parallel here is we have the uh, Jewish Passover, which some Christians do all this. They have the wine and they have the lamb and all that, which is fine. They, they still keep that same feast. Um, but we call it, Paul called it the Lord's Supper. He also used the word fellowship or communion. So that's why it's called communion. And also there, the Greek word of the word blessed, like he blessed it, which is a word that sometimes means thanksgiving, giving thanks. The Greek word is Eucharist, etc. I can't, I don't know the rest of the word, but it, Eucharist is in that Greek word. And that's where the Catholic and Catholic churches and Catholic services and circles um, they call it the Eucharist. I have no problem with that. It's giving thanks. And so the bread represents the body of Jesus. And this is so powerful and so significant. We're supposed to remember this as often as we eat it. And I think probably the uh, in, in history, it seems very clear. Even in the book of Acts, there was a church that did it. It says they broke bread on the first day of every week. And maybe we should do it every week. There's a lot of churches that don't, and that's fine. Um, they do it. As, it says, as oft, this is what Paul said later in 1 Corinthians 11, as oft as you do this, remember the, the Lord's death. And so it doesn't say how much to do it. So it could be ever so often, it could be once a month, it could be one at once every six months. But it seems like biblically the, they did it. And there's his, history, in the history of the church for a long time, mass people do it at least once a week. Some people even did it more. All right, so we have the bread representing the body of Jesus. And he, his body was torn to pieces for you and me so that we could be freed from our sins. So this is wonderful. The wine represents the blood of Jesus. The wine represents the blood of Jesus. And that's the shedding of his blood. And boy, did he get a lot of blood shed out of his body. Just like a lamb got a lot of blood taken out of a lamb. Uh, the lamb represents Jesus himself. And it's very interesting in, in the Gospels here, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, not one place in any of them is the lamb mentioned. And maybe that's, there's a reason for that. It's kind of surprising. Why isn't it mentioned? Because it's Jesus himself was the lamb. Of course, they didn't eat ham. <laughs> um, by the way, John 6 mentions, Jesus, I am the bread of life, and unless you eat the, my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. It's, a lot of people think that is in reference to this, that Jesus is kind of bringing it forth. It could be a connection there, but I don't necessarily think it has to be. It's just a symbolic way of meaning, come into me and sink your teeth into my doctrine and my words and all, because he goes on and says in John 6, 63, he says, my words are spirit and they are life. It's not physical. You're not eating my flesh literally. All right, but anyway, so we have bread, body of Jesus, wine, blood of Jesus, lamb is Jesus himself. Um, Egypt is when uh, the covenant and the Passover was signif uh, sig signifying they are leaving Egypt. They're departing out of this slavery. And, uh, and in the Last Supper, uh, we are, his, his body was broken so that we could be free from sin, the, uh, from slavery to sin and slavery of sin and bondage and all. So that's really cool. And the promised land uh, is is what God was saying to the people in um, in the in the in the Old Testament. You know, to to Jewish people, I'm going to give you a promised land. He promised that to Abraham, and and Moses was headed for the promised land, and his people and all. And uh, kind of, it could be basically a a picture of the kingdom of God or heaven itself. Actually, like our promised land is heaven itself. Although there's senses of the promised land being more than that for us as Christians, you, you, we, we can actually um, conquer sin and enemies in our lives, devils and all that here and now. But this is so rich. This is so special. Um, see, God's not just, and he's mainly interested in the internals, but he also gave us externals. And those are important too. We have two major ones. Do you know what those are? Baptism and water. There's different baptisms, but one of them is baptism in water. It's a physical picture of the death, burial, resurrection. You get go under the water like you're being buried. You raise up. That's ex external. It's an external thing um, showing what's happening internally. Same thing with this Passover meal, this Eucharist, this communion, this Lord's Supper, all these different titles of it. And that is that um, it's an external reminder um, 
and it's so special it's powerful the presence of the lord is right there he, he's everywhere too but it, communion at a church and and on coming to the table it's a sacred time you need to look at yourself and consider your sins and remember that jesus died for those sins and repent from those sins and eat it and drink it in a worthy manner now most churches don't do wine some do um, it's grape juice, but it's still symbolic for the blood of Jesus. So I think that's good. Um, if I think of any other things I kind of want to share, I'll probably get them in the, I'll re re review them in the next video. It's a very, very special time and very new to these disciples as a new covenant. He's talking about, he's, like he said, body and blood is himself, you know, and it's it's commemoration. It's a, it's a memorial. It's actually getting them to think what is this all about of his death this is so powerful anyway i think that's good god bless you thanks for listening